Our next selector is Clara Von Watkins. She was raised in the Mojave Desert, graduated from the University of Nevada, Reno, and earned her MFA from The Ohio State University, where she was a presidential fellow. She's also the author of the novel Gold, Fame, Citrus, and the highly acclaimed and very excellent short story collection, Battleborn. She's currently a Shearing Fellow at the Black Mountain Institute at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. So here's Clara to select our next person. <laughs> Hello, party people. Thank you so much for being here to celebrate books. I am delighted to present Hannah Lilith Asadi as one of the National Book Foundation's five under 35. Asadi's first novel, Sonora, available for purchase here tonight, is a book about Arizona and New York and the vexed souls rising from those places. At its opening, the novel's narrator, Alam, daughter of a Palestinian father and a Jewish mother, waits in an Arizona hospital for her father to wake from surgery. This dramatic moment is stretched taut across the entire book becoming a backdrop to Alam's girlhood on the outskirts of a ravenously growing phoenix. Alam waits for her father to return or not. She smokes and walks in the desert where he taught her to feed coyotes. For Alam, returning to this place summons Laura, who once emerged from the desert reservation to become Alam's only friend. Together, the girls receive visions and accumulate scars. They visit a mystic in Mexico who confirms Alam cursed. Her father also fears the evil eye, and with good reason, the boys Alam touches drop like flies. And all that's before they even get to New York, where things go spectacularly, glamorously wrong. Sonora is a chimeric novel, a novel of transformation, a fearsome, witchy love novel. In the book Specific Magic, a person can be a place, and a place can be a person. Asadi's voice takes on edginess with elegance to create an addictive portrait of an all-consuming friendship. No, not friendship. The better word is home. Laura ruins Alam's life. She also makes Alam live. A recursive elegy that makes reading this novel like peeking into an exile's dream journal. As Alam's father puts it, if my sins come back to me through you, I won't be able to breathe. That's history, Alam. It's cyclical like a curse. If Sonora is a curse, and if our shared desert is cursed and doomed, it's a curse I do not want lifted. Instead, I invite you all to join me under the spell of this stunning debut novel and help me welcome to the stage its author, brilliant Hannah Lilith Asadi. That's why we live here, even when it gets dark at 4 p.m. <laughs> um, so, anyways, I'm just going to read... Yeah, this is amazing. Thank you, the National Book Foundation, as well. I'm just going to read very briefly um, from the beginning um, a scene that is shortly after the introduction that Claire spoke about, but um, it's an early scene in the desert um, where Ahlam and her father get stuck in the Superstition Mountains. A few minutes later, the engine died, 
The view we had had of the night sky was now blocked by a veil of mountain. The lights of Phoenix had disappeared miles back. Are we lost, I asked finally, watching my father on the hood of the battle star, waiting for reception on his foot-length mobile phone. Go to sleep, he said. I pretended to sleep as he smoked his parliaments, finishing one and with each extinguishing bud, beginning another, surrendering only when the dust had risen so thick it covered the stars. My father jumped into the car and closed the windows. Everywhere there was thunder. The sky was torn asunder and purple, and there was the rain, thick on the windshield, thick on the steel of our battle star. I know that I hadn't fallen asleep when the sounds of the storm dissolved into a chorus of voices, their screaming emanating, emanating from within me instead of without. I know that it was not a dream when I saw Laura. She was just outside our window, dressed in a charcoal gray cocktail dress. Mascara streamed down her face. Her hair had lost its dark luster, turned to ashen. Her body was still a girl's, but her face suddenly that of a woman. She was tied upside down from a saguaro cactus, crucified by way of her legs rather than her arms. She began to swing as the wind picked up. The dust rose. She was weeping, her eyes prosecuting wide. Soon you will be blind, I wanted to say. But the wind was so bellowing and the sand so swirling between us, it was difficult to tell which of the two of us needed the warning. My father shook me and I came to. He was speaking in Arabic, reading verses of the Quran over my forehead. I was covered in sweat. I feel cold, I said. It was just a dream, my father said. Stop it.